otherwise we'll be looking into the next uh, video on the basic aerodynamics regarding helicopter first the basic thing how and what will be the direction of lift and thrust in case of the helicopter so in case of helicopter with the rotor moving in this fashion with the engine installed somewhere here and making the helicopter go upward that means the lift as well as the direction of the thrust will be perpendicular to the plane of rotation of the rotor blade it will be perpendicular if the rotor blade is in this direction that means this will be the direction of the lift and thrust force if the rotor blade plane is in this direction that means this will be the direction of the lift and thrust force so lift and thrust force will always be perpendicular to the plane of rotation okay tip path next we'll try to look into few concepts very specific the first thing is we'll look into torque reaction now with the rotor turning this way assume it is turning in the anti clockwise direction in this due course of time we'll be assuming that the rotor blade always moves in anti clockwise direction we'll just assume that way okay and based on that we'll try to figure out how things will work so we are assuming that the rotor blade is moving in the anti clockwise direction and the rotor blade being attached to the helicopter so at per newton's third law the helicopter would try to move in the opposite direction so if the rotor blade is moving in the anti clockwise direction in that case the helicopter would start moving in the clockwise direction so this is what we call as torque reaction so we need to prevent it correct so how are you going to prevent it so to prevent it we need to apply thrust or torque in the opposite direction and what is providing this thrust or the torque in the opposite direction it is the tail rotor another name for tail rotor is auxiliary rotor another name for it is anti torque rotor so whether it you are uh, calling it as anti torque rotor whether you are calling it as uh, the auxiliary rotor or whether you are calling it as tail rotor all are same so what is the function of this the function of the tail rotor is to generate thrust in the opposite direction so as to prevent the helicopter from turning in the opposite direction compared to the rotor blade to prevent this newton's third law so we are stopping newton third law from acting on the helicopter body and this is torque reaction next topic is the symmetry of lift again we are assuming that the rotor blade is moving in the anti clockwise direction and the helicopter is moving in this direction so it is approaching towards you and at the same time the rotor blade is moving in this direction anti clockwise so if the rotor blade is moving in the anti clockwise direction with the helicopter approaching towards you then in this side with the helicopter blade moving like this at this point in the in my left hand uh, right hand side sorry this will be the component of the velocity pointing towards you as well as the helicopter is also moving in the same direction whereas in the other side in the left hand side with the rotor blade moving like this the tangential velocity of the rotor blade will be in the opposite direction and the helicopter moving in this direction therefore in my left hand side the net velocity is getting decreased whereas in my right hand side the net velocity is getting increased because we know lift is proportional to the square of the velocity that implies in my right hand side i will have more lift and in my left hand side i will have less lift so there is a dissymmetry of lift correct so this is what dissymmetry of lift is all about but this is not the end why now we need to consider the gyroscopic effect as well because the rotor bl uh, blade is rigid it has got mass and it is moving at very high speed so definitely there is gyroscopic action going on 
and because there is gyroscopic action going on so there is precision as well so if the lifting force I am assuming to be acting in the right hand direction a greater increase in the lifting force and a low value of lift in the left hand side so this lifting force exactly won't act in my right hand side but will shift by 90 degree okay so we are getting the gyroscopic effect and because we are having the gyroscopic effect so we are getting the precision and that is why we are getting the dissymmetry of lift as well so that will be how we will be getting the dissymmetry of lift now the question is how this can be removed there are two ways it can be removed one is by the blade flapping action and the second is by the operation of the cyclic pitch next topic we will look into is blade flapping what is blade flapping as we have seen that in the right hand side the net velocity is getting increased and in the left hand side the lift net velocity is getting decreased and because of this difference in the lift we are getting the dissymmetry condition a asymmetric condition a greater lift here and lesser lift in the other direction so if i am having more lift in one side and lesser lift in the other side the place where i am having the more lift quite natural that the rotor blade will try to move upward whereas in the other direction it will try to move downward so if the rotor blade is moving upward or the blade is flapping upward that means with relative to the blade the air is moving downward and if the air is moving downward that means the lift now is getting decreased because if the air is moving downward that means the angle of attack is getting decreased and if the angle of attack is getting decreased that means the lift is getting decreased so always remember if a blade flaps upward a blade moving upward then the relative air is moving downward with the relative air moving downward the net angle of attack is getting decreased and because the net angle of attack is getting decreased so we are having a lesser value of lift and in the other case flap is moving downward so the relative air is moving upward because the relative air is moving upward so the angle of attack now increases the local angle of attack increases and because of which the lift will increase so what we have seen here is this particular uh, in the right hand side even though we are having because of the dissymmetry of lift we are having a greater increase in lift and because of which this uh, rotor blade tries to move upward but the moment it moves upward the relative air is moving downward and because of which the angle of attack is getting decreased and because the angle of attack is getting decreased so it is moving downward again whenever it is moving downward the relative air is moving upward with the relative air moving upward that means the lift angle of attack all increases and because it increases that means this will move upward and the whole thing will repeat so this is blade flapping action okay the next topic is coning now what are the normal forces acting on the helicopter blade quite natural the first thing is the weight mg force is it and if the rotor blade is moving then there is upward force as well the lifting force but the moment the rotor blade is moving there is centrifugal forces as well so if the helicopter is moving upward that means quite natural that the lift definitely is bigger than the weight and that is the simple logic behind the helicopter moving upward so if that is the case that implies that the main force in this perpendicular direction is the lift force which is acting upward and why we are getting this lift force because the engine is moving and with the movement of the engine the rotor blade is moving so with the movement of the rotor blade there is centrifugal forces so we have got one force here one force here so the resultant of these two force is this one and because of this force the helicopter blade will try to cone 
And this is known as conning. Okay? Next, we'll try to look at what happens if the rotor blade is coned up. Now, if the rotor blade is coning up, that means the amount of air it is taking is less. Correct? That means the mass of air which is interacting with the surface is less because like this more surface the more amount of air is interacting but with the rotor blade coning up less amount of air is interacting with the rotor blade it's so if the mass of air which is interacting with the rotor blade per unit time get decreased that implies that mass per unit time into the velocity of air that means this momentum is getting decreased. Lift, we know, is proportional to lift is a force, isn't it? And it is proportional to mass into acceleration and what is the mass? It is the mass of the incoming air. Now with the less area, less mass of incoming air is acting on the rotor blade. So mass per unit time get decreased. Now what is mass per unit time? If you recall, from the equation of continuity, mass per unit time is rho a v, density area into velocity. So in other words, we can say lift is proportional to rho density area velocity into we have got the other velocity as well. So rho a v square. So lift is proportional to the area into v square. So with the coning, as the area decreases, that means the lift will de get decreased by same amount. So the lift gets decreased. So if the lift gets decreased, that means the aircraft will sink. If the aircraft is sinking, that means the relative air is moving up. If the relative air is moving up, that means the lift increases. Because relative air moving up implies angle of attack is getting increased. And angle of attack getting increased, that means the lift and drag would increase. So if the lift increases and at the same time the drag would increase as well, so because of the increase in drag, there is a decrease in the RPM because the rotor blade will experience this resistance and because of which the RPM of the rotor blade will decrease. And if the RPM of the rotor blade get decreased, that means the centrifugal force now will be decreased. And if the centrifugal force decreases, that means there will be more coning because it is the centrifugal force which is keeping it like this, trying to pull it. Now, if there is no centrifugal force, in that case, it will cone up more. So if now, because of the decrease in the RPM, the centrifugal force decreases. And because of the decrease in the centrifugal force, there is no more or lesser stretching action. And because the stretching action gets reduced, so it will cone up more. And if it is coning up more, that means lesser will be the lift now again. So this is the effect of the coning. How to reduce this problem? So to reduce the coning, we need to reduce the pitch angle. Because if I reduce the pitch angle, the angle of attack would decrease. And with the decrease in the angle of attack, the lift and drag would decrease. So our aim is to reduce the drag and exactly that what happens. So how exactly this happens in case of, we'll try to look into the two different conditions, two different types of rotor. One is semi-rigid rotor and another is the articulated type of rotor. So in case of semi-rigid rotor that happens be, or this action takes place or this corrective measures happens because of the uh, blade bending whereas in case of the articulated type this happens because the blade assumes an upward angle and the movement about the flapping hinges. Next, we'll try to look at the condition of over pitching. What would happen if the pitch angle get increased by a large amount? So if the pitch angle get increased by a larger amount, in that case, the lift would increase and the drag would increase as well. Because of the increase in the drag by a very large amount, the RPM would decrease and if the RPM 
get decreased, that means the aircraft will start cooling. And if the aircraft starts cooling, effective area get decreased. And if the effective area get decreased, that means the lift would decrease. And if the lift get decreased, that means the aircraft would sink. And if the aircraft is sinking, that means the lift will get further reduced. Next, we'll try to look into Coralie's effect. Now, due to this uh, flapping action, the center of mass of the plate changes its position. So what is the center of mass? Center of mass is the point where the entire mass is supposed to be acting. If the blade coning upward, the center of mass starts moving closure. So if the center of mass starts moving closure, the angular acceleration will get increased. Why so? Because Angular acceleration is rate of change of angular velocity. Angular velocity omega is V by R. So, angular acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius. The moment it cones up, the radius get decreased. And if the radius is getting decreased, so, because angle of angular acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius, with the coning up, the radius is getting decreased, and with the decrease in the radius, the angular acceleration will increase. So, the net effect is that angular acceleration would increase. Now, if the angular acceleration increases on the blade which moves up, and similarly the angular acceleration would decrease on the blade which moves downward. Correct? Quite natural? So, Increase and decrease in the angular acceleration is taking place or can happen. So if the angular acceleration leads to a positive acceleration, so that is known as leading and if this is a negative acceleration or deceleration, we call that as lagging or haunting. Next we'll try to look at Coralie's effect in a Two on a two-bladed rotor, and we'll be considering two different types of rotor. One is the conventional rotor, and another is underslug rotor. Now, what is conventional rotor and what is underslug rotor? You can see in the picture. So, in case of the uh, conventional aircraft, the moment the flap moves up, the movement of the center of mass is more compared to the say uh, <coughs> underslug so underslug is the condition where the rotor is mounted below the mast and so the changes in the position of the center of mass in case of underslug rotor is yes so out of this two conventional and underslug, which is a more preferred action, uh, type of rotor, it quite naturally it is the underslug. Why so? Because in case of an underslug, the change in the position of the center of mass is less. And because the change in the position of center of mass is less, so the change in the acceleration or the deceleration that will happen would be lesser. So the stability will be greater. So in case of underslug rotor, we are having greater stability. So you prefer underslug rotor compared to the conventional rotor. That's all for now. Okay.